So let us try to understand what's the benefit of uh, using the workspaces. So whenever you open the Photoshop, the layout may be different for you. So for example, right now I can see this toolbox on the left hand side and then on the right side, side there is a color and swatches tabs or we can call them panels and then down here there is a layers and paths. But it is not necessary that this layout will be the same for other person who is opening the Photoshop for the first time how this uh, panels are structured that depends upon the workspace so if you go to window and in here you can see there is a workspace menu and over here we can have different types of workspaces so this is the default workspace essentials but apart from that you can set the workspace to 3d graphic and wave motion painting photography so all these workspaces are available and based upon these workspaces the layout will change so i'm just gonna select say photography and you will notice that there will be a lot of changes in the layout so you can see that as soon as i selected the photography there has been some changes the way photoshop looks and also this some panels are removed some panels are added so if you can't see any panel uh, or if you want to reset the panels to the default then you can go to window and then workspaces and then you can say I want to reset photography or if you want to reset the essentials you can just select essentials and then click on reset essential so right now we have selected photography that's why it's saying reset photography but if I select essentials and say I'm gonna remove this panel so you can see the layers panel is removed but if you want to get that panel back just go to window and then workspace and then you can do reset essentials and then that panel will come back that's it so most of the time people get confused and annoyed because they are not able to find the panels some panels are visible some are not and this is how you can get it back so you can reset it to the default panels basically using this workspace settings so very important to know especially if you are a beginner Now let's talk about this toolbox so in the toolbox i'm gonna cover some important tools and uh, the easy ones uh, to start with so here you can see that there is this brush tool so you can also select the tool by pressing this b so in each tool they will give you the shortcut key that you can use to select the tool so i'm just gonna press b and then you will notice that that uh, brush tool will be selected so i just press b and you can see that brush tool is selected as soon as we select any tool at the top you will see the settings of this tool so you can select the brush type br brush size mode blending mode opacity flow smoothing so for each tool there will be different settings okay some some settings are common but some settings will depend like on what kind of tool you have selected for example if i select this selection rectangular marquee tool you can see that the settings are different from what they what were for the brush now let us start with the brush tool it is very easy to understand so here you can select at the top the brush size you can select like the size of the brush you can see there is a circle there so if you increase this the size will be increased and then you can select the hardness as well so you can see this here the hardness level is lesser but here hardness level is 100 percent so you will get different effects i'm just gonna use this particular hardness and you can see i'm just gonna select the layer one and you can see that this is how you can use this brush tool so right now this foreground color is white and that's why it is painting with white but if you want to paint it with the red you can do that very easily like this okay now let us move on to the next important tool that is text tool so with the text tool you can write any text okay so if you right click on this text tool you can see that there are different types of text tool that is horizontal vertical vertical type mask horizontal type marks etc so if you want to type horizontally then you can use the horizontal type tool if you want to write vertically you can use the vertical type tool so I'm just gonna select the horizontal and then just click 
and here you can type anything like this and you can select the color as well so right now it is selecting is uh, foreground that is the red color but you can definitely change that color as well and then for the as i said for each tool there will be different settings you can see here for the text tool the settings are like font font size the alignment this one is warp text you can create like curve the text and there are several other settings as well so the next tool is this eraser tool so with eraser tool what you can do is you can erase the part of the image so before that you will have to rasterize this uh, layer so just right click on that layer that you want to erase and then then please click on this rasterize and then you can see that it is getting erased so the layer beneath this one is has got this white background color and that's why it's showing the white background but if you unhide it you will notice that the transparent thing is being shown over there so it's very easy tool eraser you can just erase anything then there is a shapes tool so you can uh, draw the rectangle the rounded rectangle tool ellipse polygon tool line tool is there so just select that tool and then you can draw any shapes basically over there and you can also choose the stroke as well and similarly you can use these other shapes tools as well if you want rectangle use that one polygon line tool etc you can also choose the custom shape tool as well then very important is the selection tools so with the selection tools you can select any part of the image so for example you want to select this portion of the image you can select that and then you can just right click and then create on the layer via cut or via copy so what will happen is that that portion will be cut and then new layer will be created or it will be copied and then new layer will be created so based upon what option you are selecting so selection uh, in selection there are various tools so based upon what kind of portion you want to select for example there is a rectangle then elliptical marquee tool there is a uh, this tool called as a lasso tool and then there is a quick selection tool and if you right click you will see other tools as well like my Ma magic wand tool and then there is a polygon lasso tool and then magnetic lasso tool as well just remember that these all these tools are used to select the portion of the image maybe it is circular maybe you can give the custom uh, shape as well and then select that specific portion and then at the top this is also very useful this move tool most of the uh, most of the times you will be using this move tool to move the image around so for example i have selected this image and then i can move it like this okay on the canvas and here there is this uh, foreground and ba uh, background colors you can choose so if you want to select different color just click on that one and then this is how you can change the colors now let's talk about this layer so as you can see on the right hand side this this is showing the layers panel and in here it will show the all the layers that are part of this particular photoshop document you can have multiple layers in a single document and the order of this layers is very important so whatever is at the top order the top layer uh, will be visible and the rest of the stuff will be invisible by default unless you have changed the opacity so here you can see that we have got this one uh, this layer here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put another layer over there at the top so this this is buttons are very important down here so you can create a new layer using this button you can see new layer is created you can delete the layer that you have selected you can also group the layers and then there is a adjustment layer can be also created you can also apply the mask and then layer style can also be changed you can change the order of these layers by just dragging and dropping it like this and you can also lock the layers as well so if you lock the layer you can't uh, do some changes for example if you click here lock all so you can't uh, do like you know transparent pixels can't be changed you can't edit anything on that layer you can't move the position as well so that thing is possible by locking the layer you can also change the opacity as well so for example i'm going to delete this top layer by clicking here and then i'm going to change the opacity so you can see this is how you can change the opacity of the layer as well and then there is a blending mode so based upon the blending mode you can look like what kind of impact it is having on the image and based upon your requirement you can choose this blending modes as well the next thing that i'm talking about are the transformations so you can transform the image so here we have selected this image and you can see this when we select that particular layer this image is being selected 
so if you click on the move tool this image will be selected and you can just drag it like this to reduce the width and height of this particular image you can press shift and then drag to change just the width of the image normally it will try to uh, maintain the aspect ratio and that's why height will also be increased or decreased but if you want to avoid that you can just press shift key and then do those changes like this you can also rotate it just take the mouse over there at the corner and you can see you can rotate this image as well you can flip as well flip horizontal flip vertical then there is this scale rotate skew distort all these options are available free transform the next one is image adjustments so if you select the layer here the photo is and then go to the image there you will see this adjustments menu and then you can change the brightness you can change the levels and change the curves exposure can also be changed then you can also make the image black and white you can apply the photo filter as well you can also apply the gradient map you can also apply the shadows highlights that thing is also possible so let us convert it black and white and you can see if i just click on ok the image has turned black and white like this because of the color overlay was not visible but as soon as I remove the color overlay it is uh, showing this image as black and white and to remove any layers like visibility you can use these eye icons the final thing that I want to tell you is about the filter so select the image and then go to the filter and over here you can apply the filters very easily so just go to the filter gallery and then you can see how the effects are being applied over here see how beautiful the effects are being shown here so just select options on the right hand side and then effects will be applied so some interesting and cool effects are being applied over here so there are a lot of effects over here you can blur the image you can distort it you can add the noise you can sharpen it you can do the oil paint emboss all these options are available so you can also have a look at that i think this is a really good starting point if you are uh, just starting with the photoshop just uh, get to know about these tools start with the simple simple tools and as you gain the confidence then you can uh, work on some complex applications of photoshop thanks for watching